it is possible to use GraphQL and Firebase together. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how that works. Now, before I get into the tutorial, I want to give you a background on GraphQL for those of you that might not have used it before. Now, GraphQL solves the problem of under and overfetching your data. Now, if you think of a traditional RESTful API as an example, let's think of a users or a posts API. Now, each one of those posts or users is going to have a huge amount of information from meta field, from metadata to individual bits of information about that user or post. Now, on your front end application, you might only want to display a handful of those fields, maybe their first and last name, maybe their username, maybe their email. Now, regardless of what you want to display on the front end, if this was a traditional RESTful API, when you make your request to get that data, you're going to get back that entire object from the API. Now, that affects performance, it affects load time. Now, that is exactly the problem that GraphQL solves. It allows you to specify the fields and only the fields that you want. And GraphQL is smart enough to only send you back the data that you have requested. If you're enjoying this video tutorial, why not subscribe to my channel? I'll also be posting a link in the description to the official playlist for this series. And I am also going to share a direct link to the official GitHub repository for the e-commerce website we built over the course of this series. You can also find my website at simpletut.com where I post all of my courses and you can enroll in those courses for free and track your process, your progress through those courses through your personal account. Now, in order to use GraphQL and Firebase together, you have to deploy your GraphQL API as a Firebase function. Uh, now, that is also the reason why I haven't used GraphQL in this series so far. I felt that the client-side APIs just enabled us to keep all of that logic within our application. If I wanted to use GraphQL, I'd have to deploy that API separately, which would have meant we'd have to make asynchronous requests to our Firebase function, and that would have just added more complexity, as well as the fact that you cannot use the Cloud Firestore. That's the one we've been using so far throughout this series. To use GraphQL, you will have to use the Firebase real-time database, which is a little bit different. And just as a side note, you also have to write your security rules slightly differently. In some ways, I actually prefer the real-time database, but again, it is uh, something different within the Firebase ecosystem. Let's get started and create our real-time database. So to do that, you'll need to come over to your Firebase console and within your project. Once you're there, you need to just select real-time database from our navigation and then click on create database. There is a quick setup to go through. I'm just going to go ahead and leave United States selected here. And I'm also going to select the uh, test mode to actually enable and create this database. Now that we've created our real-time database, we can import some test data. Now, for the purposes of this tutorial, I've created some uh, test data, which is just a JSON file with a posts object. Each of these posts has a user ID, an ID, title, and body field. And this is what we want to upload to our real-time database. So I'll come back over to the website. I'm just gonna click on import JSON. I'm gonna click on browse and just select the file I created. Once I've selected that file, I'm just going to click on import. And as you can see, that's just imported the data that I'd specified in that file. Now, as I previously said earlier in this tutorial, we're going to be deploying our GraphQL API as a Firebase function. So we're going to need to go ahead and create that Firebase function using the Firebase tools CLI. So I've created a new project and I'm within VS Code. I'm just gonna come and create a new terminal. And the first thing that we need to check is that you have the Firebase Tools CLI installed globally on your machine. So to do that, you're just gonna to need to run this simple command, 
Once you have that installed, you're just going to need to log in. So to do that, you'll just type in Firebase login. Uh, and as you can see here, I'm already signed in to my Firebase account. Now, of course, if you're not signed in, you're going to be prompted to log in. So just go ahead and log in to your Firebase. At this point, we're finally ready to create our Firebase function. So to do that, we'll just say Firebase in it. And that's going to prompt us with some more options. So what we want to do is configure and deploy cloud functions. So I'm going to scroll down, hit my space bar on that option and then click on return. That's then going to ask me if I want to use an existing project. Of course I do. So I'll select that option. It's then going to allow me to select the GraphQL Firebase project that I created for this tutorial. So you can go ahead and select the uh, Firebase project that you have created. It's then going to give me the option of JavaScript or TypeScript. Now we're not using TypeScript in this tutorial, so I'm just going to select the JavaScript option. It's giving me the option of using ESLint to catch, to catch uh, syntax bugs. I think that's always a good option, so I'm going to say yes. And then it's just asking me if I want to install the NPM dependencies and of course I do. So again, I'm going to say yes. If you followed those steps correctly, what you should find is that the Firebase CLI has created a functions directory within your project folder, as well as some other files. Now within the functions directory, we have index.js, which is where we're going to be writing our Firebase functions. Now it's very important to understand that this is a separate NPM project living within your project folder. So you can actually install separate NPM dependencies for your Firebase functions as you have for any other project that might be living within your project folder. The first thing that we need to do is install some new dependencies. So to do that, I'm going to select new terminal and I need to make sure that I am within my functions folder. So to do that, all I'm going to do is say CD functions. And as you can see, I'm now within my functions directory. And I need to install uh, the Apollo Server Express and Express. So I'm going to go ahead and hit return and install those two dependencies. Now I just want to point out if I open up my package.json file that as you can see, I've now installed those two dependencies, but I already had Firebase admin installed as a dependency as well as Firebase functions. And we're going to be using both of those. So let's come back over to the index file that lives within our functions folder. I'm going to delete this comment. And the first thing that I'm going to do is import those dependencies. So we're going to import admin from Firebase admin. We're going to import express from express. And we want to import two things from Apollo Server Express, which is Apollo Server and GQL, which is what we're going to be using to write our GraphQL queries. The next thing that we need to do is initialize our Firebase application. So to do that, we're going to come over to the Firebase console. We're going to go into our settings select users and permissions and select service accounts. And what we need to do is we need to generate a new private key. Make sure we've selected Node.js here. Let's go ahead and click on that and then click on generate key. Once you've saved your private key somewhere on your machine, make sure to drag that into your functions folder. And then back in VS Code, we're going to go ahead and import that service account. So we'll just say const service account equals require. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to import the file we downloaded from Firebase. Now to initialize our Firebase application, all we have to do is call admin.initialize app. We're going to pass an object with two keys. The first is credential. That's going to take admin dot credential dot cert. And to cert, we pass our service account 
that we downloaded from Firebase. And the second thing is our database URL. So we're actually going to get that from our Firebase console. So let's come back over to the web browser. And still within our service accounts tab, you'll see here that we have our database URL. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that URL, come back over to VS Code and paste in that database URL. We can now write out our type definitions and our resolvers. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out my types. I'm going to store this in a constant called uh, type defs. And this is where we're going to use GQL. We're going to need to use two backticks here. And then what we'll do is we'll type out our post type. So we'll say type post. And this is basically going to include all the fields that we have in our data. So the first one is going to be our user ID. And of course, this is type int because this is just a number. Uh, and the second one is ID. And again, this is type int. Um, and then we're going to have our title, which is going to be of type string. And then finally, our body, which again is type string. So that is our post type, but we're going to need to write out our query type as well. So I'll say type query. And for this, so we're going to have our posts. And this is going to return an array of type post. Okay, so that is our type definitions done. The next thing that we need to do is write out our resolvers. So I'm going to create another const here called resolvers. which is going to have our queries and our posts query, which is going to contain a function. And this is where we're going to go out and get the data from our Firebase real-time database. So what we need to do is we need to uh, return admin, and then we need to chain on uh, a bunch of methods here. So the first is going to be database. And then we need to reference our posts. And then once we get the value, we need to get the snapshot. So we'll say then we'll get the snapshot. And we're going to call uh, snapshot.val to get the data. But that is going to be an object. So what we actually need to do is transform that into an array. So we're going to take the value. We're going to call object.keys and we're going to pass in the val and then we're going to call dot map. We're going to get the key and we're just going to return the value of the key. Right? So pretty simple. Okay, so now that we've written out our resolvers, all we need to do is we need to create an instance of our express application. So to do that, we'll just say const app equals and call express. And then we need to do something similar for our Apollo server. So I'll say const server equals new Apollo server. And we need to pass in both our type definitions and our resolvers. And then we need to pass in our express middleware. So I'm going to call server dot apply middleware. And the first thing that we need to pass in here is our app. Then we need to specify the path. And then finally, we need to configure our cores, we're just going to set that to true. And then all that remains for us to do here is to export our Firebase function. So I'm going to call exports dot graphql. And this is just the name of our endpoint. We're going to call functions.https.onRequest and pass in our app. OK, so that was pretty easy. OK, so at this point, we could actually deploy our Firebase function. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test and run this locally using an emulator built into the CLI. So that's really easy for us to run. All we have to do is launch a new terminal window. And make sure that we're in, we're within our functions directory. So I'll say cd 
functions. And then all we have to type in is simply npm run serve, and that's going to run the Firebase command, and it's going to launch our emulator. And as you can see here from the terminal, you can see that it was initialized on this URL here. So I'm just going to click on, hold down command on a Mac, select that URL. Now, as you can see, I'm running this locally, and I can also test my queries within the graphical inter interface. So for example, let's write our query for our posts. So I'm going to use my posts query, and I'm going to specify that I want to get back both the title and I want to get back the body uh, of my posts. So I'll just hit on the play. And as you can see, uh, I'm able to get that data back. Now, this is a great point for me in the video to point out again uh, why people like GraphQL so much. Let's take another look at our uh, real-time database. And as you can see, I have more fields within my real-time database than I returned. I also have the user ID and the ID field. But because I only specified the title and body, I'm actually only getting back the data that I requested. Again, if I was to remove one of these and replace it with a different one like ID and I update the request, again, I, I'm only getting back the data I want. I can also see details about the schema uh, directly within this interface, so it's just really easy to use. So as you can see, it is possible to use GraphQL with Firebase, but in order to use Firebase with GraphQL, you have to deploy your API using Firebase functions. Now, something I mentioned earlier in the video was that the reason I didn't incorporate that into the e-commerce website we built over the course of this series was because I preferred using the client-side APIs directly within the application instead of having to constantly post requests to an external API. That doesn't change the fact that I think GraphQL is fantastic. I love it and I use it all the time in my other projects. But it is an example of picking the right tools for the right job. But again, because GraphQL is so hot right now, I wanted to cover it in this series just to give you guys some exposure to it, to also demonstrate how you can use it with Firebase. And I will be producing more video tutorials on GraphQL in the future. If you enjoyed this video tutorial or would like to see more of my content, please check out my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash simple tut. You can also find the official playlist for this series in the description of this video. I will also be posting a link to the GitHub repository for the e-commerce website we built over the course of this series. And you can find my website at simpletut.com where I post all of my courses and you'll be able to enroll in those courses for free and track your progress as you progress through each course. But as always, please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn on those notifications.